Welcome for a physics class. Uh, we are going to see current electricity, whereby we will study Ohm's law. This is a law which summarizes the relationship between current and the uh, We are going to state the Ohm's law, which talks of which states that the voltage across a given conductor is directly proportional directly proportional to the current through the provided that temperature and other physical conditions are kept constant provided temperature and other physical conditions are kept constant therefore mathematically we can say that voltage is directly proportional to the current in a given conductor so we can substitute the constant of proportionality with an equal sign and a constant and in Ohm's law, the constant is abbreviated R, so equals to a constant R times I. A constant R times I. So this tells us that this constant R is the resistance. The resistance of the conductor resistance of the conductor. Therefore, under Ohm's law, because we are saying that voltage is directly proportional to current, this means that if we plot, if we plot voltage against current, then we obtain a line through the center, a very straight line through the origin, which means that the graph of this straight line, this graph of straight line, if we calculate the slope, change in divide by change in current, because we know very well from V equals to IR, then R V out of I. So this means the slope, the slope of against current gives us resistance. The slope of voltage against current will give us the resistance of the given conductor. Therefore, with that, we can take an example on Ohm's law before we see what resistance is therefore we can take an example which says an example which says a current of 40 milliamps flows through a conductor flows through a conductor flows through a conductor of resistance 1 kilo ohm 
calculate the voltage across the conductor. Calculate the voltage across the conductor. Calculate the voltage across the conductor. So from Ohm's law, we have already seen that voltage is given by I R. And the current in this case is 40 milliampers, which means current equals to 40 multiplied by 10 power negative 3 or divided by a thousand. So that the current is now in amperes, which are the SI units of current. Then again, resistance has been given in kilo ohms, which is 1 times 10 power 3 ohms. Therefore, the SI unit of resistance is the ohm, while the SI unit of current is the amperes. So now we can get voltage in vo by saying that voltage is given by current times 10 power negative 2 because this is 40, which is already 4.0 times 10 power 1, this is 10 power negative 3, which becomes power negative 2. Multiply by 1 times 10 power 3. Therefore, this will be, this is going to be 4.0 multiplied by 10 power 1, or simply 40 volts. So the voltage across this resistance will be 40 volts. 40 volts. So now we can see what we call resistance. What we call resistance. And this is the resistivity or the, the opposition offered to the flow of current. By the atoms making a conductor. The atoms making up a conductor. So it's very definite that a conductor is made of materials which are not all conductors because we know very well in a metal conductor it is only the electrons which conduct electricity therefore which means this metal because it's not fully made of electrons the other materials will offer resistance to the flow of current therefore if they offer resistance to the flow of current this means that current will not be transmitted from one point to the other in a conductor 100 percent there is that opposition which is faced by the current flowing through a conductor and it is what we call resistance so there are three main factors which affect the resistance of a conductor factors affecting resistance of a conductor factors affecting the resistance of a conductor there are only three. The first one is temperature. Temperature. We say that when electrons are flowing, they collide with atoms in the conductor and they slow down or they are resistant. Therefore, you find when temperature is high, the particles vibrate more and they collide more with electrons, hindering their conductivity. Therefore, we can say the The higher the temperature of a conductor, the less the conductivity, which means which means high resistance. High resistance. Therefore, when temperatures are increased, the atoms vibrate more. Else colliding with more electrons in the conductor 
and they conduct less, which means now what we are calling resistance increases. In simpler terms, resistance is directly proportional to temperature T. Directly proportional. When you increase temperature, resistance also increases. Resistance also increases. In other words, conductivity goes down. We have another factor which called the length. Length of the conductor. Length of the conductor. Therefore, we can say the longer the conductor, the higher the resistance. The higher the resistance. This comes in because you find a long conductor, it means a current is flowing through a long distance, whereby it defines more atoms to collide with. And this means the longer the conductor is, then the more the, the electrons will collide with more atoms in the conductor, making it less effective. So in simpler terms, we can talk of resistance being directly proportional to the length of a conductor. Because in the length of a conductor, more atoms of the conductor will collide with the electrons carrying current and hence the current will be resisted or will be less conducted. Therefore, we talk of length being directly proportional to resistance. Then finally, we can talk of cross-section area. Cross-section area. Capital A of the conductor. So you find in a conductor, we have what we call the conducting component in the conductor. And that is mainly electrons. So you find when the conductor is thick or having a great cross-section area, you find per unit length, there are many electrons. And therefore, we usually say that because there are many electrons in each section of a unit length, then electricity is conducted better when the conductor is thick. But when it is narrow, or having a small cross-section area, you find per unit length of this conductor, there are a few electrons. Few electrons, which means conductivity goes down with, with, a, with a decrease in the width or in the cross-section area of a conductor. So this we can say that, we can say that, Resistance increases with the decrease with the decrease in the cross section area A. So resistance and the cross section area proportional, inversely proportional. We increase cross section area. You find that in a unit length there are more atoms elements which conduct. So the wider the conductor, then the more effective it is. So which means a narrow conductor will have higher resistance. So we can summarize the factors and say that we can just summarize the factors. We can summarize the factors. and say that uh, resistance is directly proportional to length but inversely proportional to cross-section area constant temperature so assuming that temperature is not a variable here then resistance is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to cross-section area which means we can now introduce a constant here, which we call the resistivity of the material times length divided by area. This means we can remain with resistivity on one side and we multiply with the reciprocal A out of L, A out of L, and here A out of L. So this means that we can remain with resistivity being equal to area times resistance 
divided by the length of the conductor. So we can look at the SI unit of resistivity. So we can say where rho is the resistivity of the conductor. TBT of the conductor. Resistivity of the conductor. So because we are saying resistivity is given by area times resistance divided by length, we know that area is in meters squared, resistance is in ohms, and length is in meters. So in this case, one meter cancels because here it is squared and here we have meters to power one, which means we will get ohms meter or meter. Therefore, the SI unit, SI unit of resistivity is ohm meter. The ohm, the ohm meter. Ohm meter. So, SI unit of resistivity, we call it the ohm meter. The ohm meter. So, we can take an example on resistivity of a conductor. The resistivity of a conductor. Uh, an example reads the following. An example reads the following. Reads the following. Let me write it. A 9 ohm resistor, a 9 ohm resistor nine ohm resistor has a length of 1.5 meters. 1.5 meters and a cross section area and a cross section cross section area of 3.0 times 10 power negative 6 meters squared calculate the resistivity of the conductor calculate the resistivity of the material the resistivity of the material. Therefore, here we will talk of resistivity given by area times resistance divided by length. And this should be area 3.0 times 10 power negative 6 multiplied by resistance of 9. Then we divide by length 1.5 this will give us 3 times 9 divided by 1.5 which gives us 1.8 times 10 times 10 power negative 5 ohm meter or meter. Therefore, resistivity is given by area times resistance divided by the length of the conductor. So, thank you for following. Subscribe to Shifting Grades and share the link. Thank you.